Action! An emergency starting nine. Carl here, Jake here. Massive news. Aaron Judge to the Yankees. 30, uh, 360 million, 40 million a year. Your thoughts, big man? Uh, the largest contract for a uh, for a position player or uh, in general in MLB history. Um, it doesn't really surprise me at all, especially coming off the season uh, that he had. What was surprising to me, and I think to a lot of people uh, around baseball, and especially the Yankees, is when Aaron Judge uh, showed up to uh, the winter meetings <clears throat> unannounced, and that had to uh, raise raise an alarm for the team. Um, I thought he might be showing up to meet with some other teams or finalize a contract with somebody else. Sure enough, ends up signing a massive contract with the Yankees. Um, so a big day for the Yankees organization. Uh, we saw that you know Brian Cashman resigned. I know a lot of people were upset about that. I saw some Barstool guys kind of pissed, but I'm sure they're a, little, they're a little bit happier now that they see Judge sign the nine-year deal. So he'll probably he'll be a Yankee for for the remainder of his his career. It seems like um, that's that's what I wanted to see. I'm glad he's staying in New York. I want to see him win a ring as a Yankee. Uh, so big day, big day for the organization. Dude, just super juicy timing on the Very. story too. I mean, Brian Cashman signing the extension, the four year extension. Yankee fans don't give a fuck. All they want is Aaron Judge back in that uniform. They want to move forward from the success that he had last year. They get their guy forty million dollars. The, the payroll's explosive. I don't know what they're going to do with the luxury tax. There's a lot of stuff that's going to come out of this down the road based on how much teams are spending now. We knew teams would be spending a lot coming out of a new collective bargaining agreement. Uh, we just see massive deal after massive deal. Aaron Judge, $360 million, nine years, not even the 10-year, nine-year, $40 million a season, staying in New York. This is our 62nd episode, by the way, so in honor of his 62 bombs, pops. Congratulations to Aaron Judge. I guess now that he's back in New York, though, man, it's like it, such a historic season last yeah, year. Yeah, I mean, does it – You know, uh, <laughs> I would think that some of these um, some of these teams don't really give a shit about the tax anymore. Like, it appears that they just want to win no matter what. They're willing to pay the luxury tax. I would do the same thing. Like, is it that much skin off their back to pay more in tax? Like, do they really give a shit? Yeah. The way the tax works, though, is it's just a penalty. Like, it's tax you don't have to pay if you play by the rules. So from a perspective of a billionaire business owner, they're just like, yo, if we don't have to pay that, I'm not paying that. And I think a lot of wealthy, successful people would be like, well, if you can avoid doing that, then don't fucking do it. Now, here's the problem. With baseball owners, is like being in college, you got the, you're got you out for a jog on the baseball team and the pitching staff, and one guy just wants to run faster than everybody else. And you're maybe you guys were out drinking a couple beers the night before, and you're just like, dude, come on. What the fuck you doing, Jeff? Slow down. Something along those lines of that group think of like we're gonna we're gonna run as a group together, even if some guys can run faster, even if some guys probably prefer to run slower. That's how major league baseball owners are to me, I think. And now that Steve Cohen's come into the mix, he's fucking trying to run laps around everybody. And I think people are more willing to catch up now. I don't think if Steve Cohen I think if the, he's not an owner, I don't know if you see this much willingness because it's like, dude, balls are on the table. I'm going to go pay Justin Verlander $43 million. I'm going to give Max Scherzer $43 million. I'm going to give Frankie Lindor $341 million. I'm going to set the fucking market. And now you have a couple other owners, it seems like, that are more willing to get into it. The Padres are throwing money around like crazy. They offered $400 million to Aaron Judge, three, over $350 million to Trey Turner. Again, I think it's because Steve Cohen's kind of pushing that group. And now you're seeing other owners respond. John Middleton with the Phillies, another one. Yeah, yeah, you could everybody. be right. Just, could be right. I mean, it makes sense. And, um, you know, with the values of the franchises um, at the place that they're at, like record highs, and, and then those numbers are only going up. Um, like if I were to own a team, I'm, I'm so rich from other stuff already. Like the only thing I want to do is win. So that would be my mindset. There's always going to be those those small markets. Say, oh, we can't compete. Like we're a smaller market. We don't have the money to spend. Well, Sell the team to somebody that, that will try and compete and spend that kind of money. Even if you take like a little bit of a loss per se, like like yearly on your team and you're going out there trying to win, at the end of the day, like you're still making money. Um, so I don't know. I'm, I may be an idiot for saying that, but like if you're owning a sports franchise and there are some out there that just want to turn a profit, but like if that's the case, you know, I think most people would agree that they're in it for the wrong reason. And, you know, I think you very well could be right with Steve Cohen. I mean, look at, I mean, the Phillies, man. Like, they 
they're not satisfied. They're they're trying trying to go out there this season in 2023 and win a World Series. And other teams, there are a handful of other teams that are trying to make that exact same statement. And the Padres trying to get, you know, Trey Turner uh, and then Judge, pretty amazing. Um, I don't know, 400, man. I, 400 million. 400 million. I mean, they they have to be a little bit upset, you think? Like, man, we what else do we got to do? We offer the guy 400 million. And you know when... When a guy like Trey Turner, everyone heard that he wants to be on the East Coast. He ended up in Philly. Not much you can do there. If the guy just flat out doesn't want to play in San Diego, maybe it didn't matter how much money you offered him. I mean, if you offer him $500 million, there's really not much difference between the three thirty dollars and five hundred. dollars Like, you're not, you can't spend it all. <laughs> you can't. You know, when you get, when you get, when you get to that level of money, if it's, 60 million versus 130, 140. Okay, that's that's a significant change. But when you're in the 200, 300, 300 plus million dollars, come on, man, your kids' kids should not be able to spend all that money. Like you're just balling out. Like there's yeah, just a level control. where it's like, all right, out you're officially balling out. So yeah. Aaron Judge, though, he want he does still want to ball out, though. He's getting his 360 from New York. He's still going to ball out. Yeah. The 400, turn down 400 from. The Padres, and then the Giants fiasco last night. John Heyman, put him in jail, nail him to a cross. He comes out last night, I think like 4.35 p.m. Central Standard Time, and, and dumps Arson Judge. Arson Judge to the Giants. People are going nuts about it. Then had to come back, deletes the tweet. Says he got the report wrong. Don't worry about it, guys. Biggest free agent signing in the well, history of Well, obviously he got the report sport. wrong. Don't worry about it, guys. The, the, um... My bad. Uh, just the the eagerness to want to be the first guy to to break the story. Obviously, that's why they're in that business. Like they want to break stories. They want to, they want people to come to them for the news, the latest news, as it comes out. I would I'd like to know the conversation that he had to make him feel confident enough to send that tweet out. Um, and I'd like to know the offer that San Francisco potentially made to Judge. I'd like to see what those numbers were. I would assume he that it was He probably had someone in the camp. He had a guy in the camp. He had a guy who works on the statistician fucking things. He had a guy who's who's the only guy who's still working the fax machine. Yeah, he just got a fax from San Francisco. No, John, John Heyman, live by the sword, die by the sword. That's a tough game. Now, here's a little behind-the-scenes starting nine, guys. Now, we'll talk and be like, well, what about this is like a thing, or should we lean into this? I've been adamant. I don't want anything to do with breaking news. When we started the show back up, people – People love that about baseball content, the internet, being the first guy to a source. It was kind of a funnier thing when I first started podcasting and nobody was listening to us or following us. So it's just funny to be like, hey, I got a scoop. This guy just got called up to high A. Like, is that a fucking scoop? No. But it, now as this progresses, I can tell you it's no way to live your life. It's like there's just no – it's just a hard living, man. Like, it, it's – Every day, just grinding notifications, grinding tips, validating stuff in all levels, NBA, MLB, NFL. But, no, I'm not. John Heyman, it's, it's a tough job, and this is what happens. Now John Heyman's going to be a punchline for the presumably the rest of his career. He will you be think getting so? shit on. Oh, he'll, he well, won't I be mean, able to send out a tweet without 30% of him saying RCG. I mean, doesn't something – yeah, I mean, he's going to get some, some backlash for that. But isn't that some shit that happens just about every year in – I'm sure it's happened to Ken Rosenthal and Morosi and and it's Aaron Judge Jake. and all these guys. It's the biggest biggest story of all time. It's biggest the biggest story up until the next one. Correct. You know. So, but I think well, you know it was funny. I was watching uh, watching the network and he's doing an interview and fumbling his phone trying to answer texts at the same time. Just just fucking hilarious. I mean the guys. And you know what? I, uh, we should give that generation, not just John Heyman, but his generation in general, more credit because, yeah, it's hard enough for me to Instagram and tweet. You know, these guys are relics compared to my experience on AOL Instant Messaging. Ancient dinosaurs. Yeah, and watch. You know? The next crop of them is going to be like 18 to 20-year-olds just fucking super savvy with all these different apps and technology, and they're, they're going to be breaking stories quicker than anybody else, and it's going to put them all out of business. Yeah, no, and I'll get jumped too. I'll get jumped in the process, and and yeah, so I'll be, that's why I'll be right there with you. Well, these moments are special to us. These emergency podcasts right now, while we are standing here and doing our thing, while those kids are still in high school. Well, I'll say that high school kids subscribe to the show. Uh, this is the Aaron Judge Emergency Podcast for Starting Nine. Uh, I got to eat some shit. 
I had a bad quote out there for the Yankees maybe two months ago being like, they're going to be substantially worse than they were. Rizzo opted out. Judge doesn't seem to want to come back. Wrong. Nothing wrong. wrong with that. We're just, you know, we're just talking shit, trying to figure things out just like the rest of everybody else. Um, I didn't think he was going anywhere up until like you know, maybe a month ago when it, it looked like he very well could end up somewhere else. And then, you know, the Heyman thing came out and I'm like, no fucking way he's going to San Francisco. But saw him Monday Night Football with, you know, on the field. I'm like, okay, like getting friendly with Tom Brady. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it could have happened. And I'm telling you that uh, winter meeting thing, him showing up unannounced, had to like, had to raise some concern for, for the Yankees. And how, how do you think that went about? Do you think he went straight to them? and was like, hey, let's, I want to get a deal done right now. Because it materialized, obviously materialized pretty quickly. And I'm sure there were tons of talks going back and forth, and there was numbers already on the table. And maybe his camp was like, hey, this is, this is what we're looking at. Um, and with the pressure being put on, obviously, by the Padres and, and the Giants, they, they probably wanted to get it done as soon as possible. So from your perspective, like, why – is that, like, a no-no for players to show up to, like, winter meetings, or is it just, like – uh, no, no, I don't, no, I don't think, it, like, no, I don't think it's a no, no. I know that, that, I mean, there's, there's players that go, um, uh, a player of his caliber. I don't necessarily think tends to show up at winter meetings, but I could be wrong, you know? Um, but in my experience, I don't, I don't know many guys, uh, that would go to that per se, but I guess it happens, but there's a ton of shit that's been that's been going on. These winter meetings have been very productive and it's, it's nice to see you guys are flying off the board. Oh, dude, the deals are going left and right. And be honest, that's part of the reason why we're doing an emergency podcast, put this out Wednesday is so that we can make sure that like the judge stuff, we know this is where people's heads are at. This is where so many people have been latching onto in free agency. We want to give that the honor and the respect that the coverage deserves. And so this is us talking Aaron judge. We'll be obviously the main show comes out tomorrow where we're going to get into more of the, obviously, a lot of these deals. Quintana, Ballinger, Andrew Heaney, don't make me keep doing it. Jamison Talion, uh, Kenley Jansen, Tywin Walker, Matt Strom, Tommy Canley. So much stuff's going on. Draft lottery, uh, Red Sox expert Chris Catello is going to come on from, I believe, I think he's in San Diego at the winter meetings. I believe I'll be talking to him later today. Um, so we have a huge full show that will be out in standard Thursday programming. But I, I want to go back. Let's just talk about these heavy hitters right now and if it's Judge and a little bit of Trey Turner and stuff. But one big takeaway I had is, like, I saw those Yankee fans respond to the Cleveland win game five. And growing up and watching the Yankees is just such a dominant dynasty. If you told me that Yankee fans would ever celebrate an ALDS victory the way that I saw Yankee fans in the street – I would not believe you because that's a different generation of Yankees fans. Correct. I mean, that's probably like these teenage young in their young early twenties, like that maybe didn't um, weren't at the age to like watch like the the dynasties of the Yankees like earlier, like they're still in diapers. So this was like a, a bigger moment for them than it necessarily would have been otherwise. You know, I don't. I don't think like guys our age or a little bit older were celebrating that quite as much. Um, I bet that they looked at that like, what the fuck are these guys doing? No, I mean, I think those are kids that, yeah, grew up older cousins, brothers, uncles, whatever, talking about like, nah, well, you know, when fucking Jeter played. So now they get a taste. You know, they got an Aaron Judge. They, that's it's a big deal. Historic season. They, get, they have their own core and crop of Yankee players. And so I guess in a sense is me reflecting back and saying that was a crazy thing to see those kids in the street. And you're like, yeah, it's, to me it's a little bozo-ish because, again, it's ALDS, you're the Yankees, they're Cleveland Guardians. They spent $86 million last year. Shut the fuck up. But at the same time, it speaks more to a broader sense of how badly and how many Yankee fans didn't experience any of that shit and want it now. And so Aaron Judge getting the $360 million, $40 million a year. Brian Cashman does it. That could have gone completely the other way is my point. Those people that were out riding the streets, good luck showing up to spring training and and sitting through 77-win baseball. I've done it. It's not easy. You'd lose those people. 
So this is way bigger than just Aaron Judge being there because, yeah, there is that generation. There, there is this whole generation of Yankee fans that know him as a team that loses in the ALCS to the Astros. Yeah, 100%. And just kind of looking around uh, briefly uh, at the AL East, clear favorite. I know it's, you know, we're, in, we're sitting here in, in fucking December, and a lot of things can still happen. The Red Sox made a couple moves. You know, the Orioles signed Kyle Gibson. Uh, Eflin's going to Tampa. But, you know, I think right, right now they're the clear favorite. I mean, we'll see what happens today and, and throughout the remainder of the offseason. Uh, but there haven't been, uh, unless there's something I'm missing, any, any huge moves that, that kind of separate, uh, separate the other team. So, um, and what, uh, let's see, of all these no longer, I mean, he's a free agent. I mean, they, they need some pitching in Boston. Um, yeah, I mean, so they're the Yankee, in trouble. Yankee, Yankee, yeah. AL East is in trouble unless unless they get going. Now, I will say there is probably the biggest acquisition of the AL East for 2023 is Tyler Glass now. Even though, he, you know, it's not really an acquisition. It's just him coming back. And if he yeah, can get the Yeah, it feels season, like an acquisition. You know. Yep. Because McClanahan's obviously the real deal. Jeff Springs came out of nowhere. Rasmussen, whatever. I mean, but, they, they just um, – and I think still for a lot of people, the Rays surprise you. And people that really watch the game aren't necessarily as surprised because of what they've – their track record is, is so good. Like, they're, they always can pitch. Um, they always play really good defense. They find ways to win. Um, so it's no surprise that they're, they're a great team. Um, and they've done it in a unique way for, for quite a while. Uh, can they beat the Yankees, though? They got their work cut out now that Judge is back in town. But t to me, it's like, great, another season of that matchup – I love that. That's probably, hmm, I don't want to say my favorite, but man, is it unique the way that the Rays and the Yankees, and you, you know, barring major injuries, they're both going to win over 90 games next year. They're both going to go on their runs. They're going to do their shit. They're going to do it completely differently. I'm looking at the Yankees roster right now. Harrison Bader, full season in center field. Oswaldo Cabrera, full season in left field. Now, IKF, a lot of Yankee fans are out on, and I've never really understood the appeal to IKF until recently I was pulling up Barry Bonds' numbers to see how good he was at swinging and making – like when he swung at balls in the strike zone, what rate did he make contact at? And it was like 91% or something, and I think major league average is like 84. So then I was looking this year, okay, well, where would that rank this year? And it would rank in the top – I think it was like top 20 – but, like, number one or number two on the list of guys who swing at pitches in the strike zone and make contact, IKF. I had no mm -hmm. fucking clue. I would, have never, I would have never known bat the ball or that that was, like, a, an elite thing that he had. was, like, if I'm swinging and that pitch is in the strike zone, I'm making contact. How big of a deal is that? I mean, yeah, maybe, but is it a big I mean, deal? His, his on-base percentage was 314. I mean, is that – that's okay. not very good. Maybe he's swinging early at stuff up in yeah, the zone. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Um, okay, not a big deal. I, I, I thought maybe it was it a big deal I, for I, Bonds because he had an 800 slugging percentage while he was doing that. I thought it was interesting because it was like the only active player that has a big slugging percentage that was in the top 20 was Jose Ramirez. So guys are just like, he don't miss, and when he does make contact, he yeah. pops. But Yeah, well, um, we talked about those little gator arms, this. and I'm sure he's got great vision. Who's got big arms? Aaron Judge. Very big arms. Let's, yeah, so he had 62 last year. He, um, the year before, I mean, so he had, what, 22, 23 home runs more than he hit in 2021. He had the 52 home run season in 2017. He's, he's ca very, very capable of hitting 50 plus homers on a yearly basis. What's, the, you know, what are the chances though, that he, that he comes close to the season he had this year? I mean, very historic season, led, led the league in a, a number of categories, but you know, what, what are your expectations for 2023 from Aaron Judge. And there's this report that came out yesterday, too, speculating that Yankee Stadium used slightly different baseballs this season um, that had a slightly stronger weight in the center that led to greater exit velocities and longer average distances. Now, where is this from? Uh, you know, I got to double-check the source on it, but it was it's, it's accepted. I mean, if that's... If that's we'll save true, it for the like, big show. Well, we'll save it for the big okay. show. But well, that's, I, it's a, qu that's cheating. a question. Of, yeah, I, I mean, is think, it not? You got to talk to the commissioner, man. He's in charge of those rulings. 
I, you know what? Here's what I know. I know that it's going to be hard for Aaron Judge to play 157 games every year. I know it's going to be hard for Aaron Judge to hit over 60 home runs and and be a slam dunk MVP like he was. Last he's just year. he's so big and he's he's so strong. He's so explosive. Try being able to stay on the field for like you said 157 or give or take a few games. Very very challenging. It's rare as a position player, especially of his stature. Uh, that you're going to play 150 plus games every season. I mean, it's it's not going to happen. It may not even happen this year, and absolutely will not happen as you get deeper into that um, into that contract. And that's not because he's 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 a guy that can't be durable. It's just shit happens. You run out of the box, you strain your calf, or you you sprain your ankle, you step on the base wrong, or you uh, you get drilled in the elbow. Like certain things over the course of seven months. Will sideline you briefly. So I mean, it's it's incredible that he was even able to play 170 or 157 games this season. Uh, a lot of good fortune. Uh, he's obviously a tremendous player, uh, but you have to have some luck on your side too to be able to to remain healthy uh, for the entire season. Yeah, and then between him, Judge, and well, between Judge, Stanton, and Rizzo, so those three guys averaged 132 games last year. Yeah, Stanton played 110, Rizzo played 130, and uh, and Judge played 157. If the Yankees want to win the division next year, you have to at least hit that number between those three guys. You know, and if one of them goes down big early, you're going to have to have two. Aaron Judge ca- carried carried that team. And so, as we ask about, like, well, moving forward with Aaron Judge, I mean, the Yankees are in big, big fucking trouble if when they're filling out their projections in their lineup card, they're looking at Aaron Judge and being like, well, he can hit 62 home runs. I mean, I think you're at your best being like, oh, 45. And if we and get 45, more than that, good. 45 yeah. is pretty fucking good. Yeah, I think yeah. they would take that. I mean, they're going to need some increased production from from up and down the order. Yeah, I'm not sure. And I'm sure that they're expecting that from certain guys. Um, well, Lou Trevino is an all-star out of nowhere. You know, you get steps back from Glabar. Obviously, Josh Donaldson had a year. Josh Donaldson, if Josh Donaldson was, was – above average to, to good next year, I wouldn't be surprised. Even though he was he was underwhelming this year, had probably would like to have a bunch of weeks back, I'm sure. But to my point, that's a veteran, knows his shit, been in and out of that division. You know, he's working right now. He ain't fucking sitting he's around. He's grinding. Yeah, yeah, he's, yeah, he's, he's got looking that. looking at tape and working on his fucking swing in a case. He's that cocky, like, like he's got the swag, like he talks shit, which I like all of it. Um, Hundred percent. He's gonna be grinding this off season, working to get better. But look, there's a there's a lot of really good, like high caliber players in the game currently. They're getting to that point where their like physicality will start to take a turn uh, for the worse. You know, and it's just father time's undefeated. So at some point, it's gonna happen. I mean, he's what is he thirty six or thirty seven years old now. I mean, it's not getting any easier to prepare every single day, and the off season gets the grind of the off season gets a little bit more strenuous, a little more taxing on the body. You might have to allow yourself a little bit more time to recover. So, you know, who knows? Is he capable of having a better season than he did last year? Absolutely, uh, but it's no guarantee. And just like a lot of these other guys who are signing deals, you know, the Kenley Jansons. Um, I mean, even. You got you to gotta look at Scherzer and Verlander. You know, I, th- I don't think there's any reason they won't be really good for 20, in 2023 and, and even after that. But, I mean, just you have to look at the longevity and how long they've played, how many innings they have. At some point, it's going gonna, it's gonna to go the opposite way. The surprising thing, and we'll get more on the big show about this, the Mets spending all that money and, you know, the depth that they had. But then they come out, they had Quintana. You know, whew, to Grom to the Rangers when, you know, the Rangers, they got a lot of holes. They got a lot. They're, they're French. They're French. They're French they got a lot of holes right now. Yeah. Well, they're can paying they? They're and a half million dollars to a guy. I mean, and they're third, a fringe playoff team. Right. Look at Philly, though. Third place gets you in. And that's see. as the long as you get in. The balance of the show. As long as you get in. And if they. Good point. And I'm not saying they, they get in, but they've definitely moved a lot closer to, to that point. And they're a much better team right now than they were last year. So here's my last take on the judge stuff. Like, Brian Cashman, 
phenomenal job back up against the wall. The Orioles are going to be better than they were last year. I, I don't know how much better, but they should be better. The Rays should be as good, if not better, than they were last year. That's the way that works. The Red Sox, who knows if they can be as terrible as if they, they pitched and caught it so poorly last year. So they have room to improve. There's there's room for to improve across that division, and you already have teams that are fucking solid. Obviously, the Blue Jays aren't going anywhere. If the Yankees don't bring back Aaron Judge this year, they're cooked in toast for the better part of a decade. There's no – you're not telling me that they lose Aaron Judge, that then they can figure out a way in the next three, four, five years – to get back to a point to catch up to wherever the fuck the Rays are going, where the Orioles are going, and where the Blue Jays have been and continue to go. So, like, having Aaron Judge back on the books, they needed it to survive. And so now they're in a spot. Can some of these younger guys step up? Can Cashman keep doing a job adding pieces? Who else is mm-hmm. going to pitch behind some of their big dogs? Like, they do have yeah. questions, but they're still, they're still, in my opinion, number one on paper in that division. No doubt about it. I completely agree. I think one of the biggest keys for them is, is having a, a healthy Luis Severino. Uh, for for an entire season, if if they have if they have him healthy, he's out there. Obviously, Cole's going to do his thing. Um, I think they'll can the pitching department, but um, yeah, you're right. If they do not sign Aaron Judge, they're they're in big trouble. This is starting nine. This is an emergency podcast. We'll be back Thursday morning, full show. Tons of signings around the league. Stuff to get caught up with. Bunch of players. Uh, trying to get this Red Sox interview to you guys and maybe a couple new segments. If you guys are nice and subscribe to the show, but you have to subscribe to the show, click the link, download, do what you got to do, send it to a friend. Um, until next time, good stuff, buddy. Got a boy.